Hey, what's up everybody? We're gonna be learning how to use the Polaroid Impulse AF camera tonight. So this is one of my just all time favorite cameras. Uh, this is actually the first one that I ever used and it's the one that I watched my parents use for years. I always wanted to use it and when I got old enough, I was like, hey, I can buy film for this thing and use it myself. And since then I've been shooting lots and lots of instant film. So the good thing about this camera is that it's pretty simple to operate, but there are a few things that you should know before getting started that'll make your life easy. So the very first thing, Polaroid cameras don't have batteries in it. So most likely if you dig this thing up or even if you buy it off somewhere like, you know, like an actual store or something, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna, you know, just be a dead camera. What actually powers Polaroid cameras, vintage Polaroid cameras at least, is the battery that's in the film itself, in the film cartridge. The actual camera itself has no battery in it, which is both a good and bad thing. The good thing is that it means that you're not gonna have to worry about, you know, a battery leaking or exploding it like an old Game Boy. Uh, but the bad thing is, is that you can't test it or use do anything with the camera until you have a new pack of film. So. Polaroid makes 600 type film. This is the kind of film you're gonna want. I like to buy it directly from Polaroid because age does matter with Polaroid film. It doesn't store well, generally needs to be refrigerated when it's not in use, and anything over a year, you're looking at like some weird like errors and things happening with it. So I always recommend just ordering straight from Polaroid, but you can get it from Amazon, you can get it from B&H, you can get it from all over the place. But You'll see it sometimes like in Best Buys and stuff. I recommend avoiding that because that film's been sitting out for a while. It's not been refrigerated, it's not been taken care of. So the first thing you need to do, no matter even if there's film in here already, you want to get a new, brand new pack of film and that's going to have a new battery in it as well. So this already has a used pack of film in it. So just looking over the camera itself while we got it out here, the counter is in the back. Um, this is where you're gonna see like how many, I don't know if you can see that in there, how many pictures you got left. Right now it says two, which means zero. Newer packs of film only have eight pictures in it, whereas older vintage Polaroid had 10 pictures in each one. So your counter is going to assume that a new pack of film has 10 photos. So when you get to two, it's really means zero. Uh, some fun math that you can do while on set. So the images will come out of here, that's your slot. So the Impulse AF is an autofocus camera. So it has this sonar autofocus mechanism here. You'll see models of this camera without the autofocus mechanism, and that just means it's a fixed focus lens. It still works, it's just not gonna be quite as sharp and nice looking of images as you'll get from this, but it's totally fine. Um, and then your, this is the little thing that covers up the lens. This is gonna be your exposure compensation. Dark to light. Make sure on this camera, if you set it, you remember that you set it because otherwise it's easy to forget. Um, and then this is the viewfinder that you're actually gonna be looking through. And one of the things that I love, love, love about this camera is that the viewfinder is much bigger on this Polaroid camera than it is on other Polaroid cameras. So this, this camera here, not enough room for all these guys. This camera here has a super tiny viewfinder and that is what's more common with six cheap 600 type box types. This is the one step close up, fixed focus lens. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video about this guy soon. Um, a really great beginner camera. Moving back to this. So the first thing you're gonna do is load in your new pack of film once you get it. So to load in film, there's this little slot on the side here you're just going to push that forward and this lip is going to come open so that's going to reveal the inside of the camera you'll be able to see up here like film that tells you you want 600 uh, type film so if there's a cartridge in there already like there is here and the camera is not working it means that the cartridge is either empty or the battery's dead if you're lucky enough to find a camera that has like a cartridge that's full of film um, when you pull it out and you like see film inside, so this one's empty. If there's film inside here and there's more than one, go ahead and put that in a dark paper bag or something because if you can always swap that film into a working cartridge and actually use. Uh, I have a video about how to swap cartridges that I'll link down in the description 
Now the cartridge is empty here, so you can just toss this thing unless you're gonna use it for the battery. Um, and we're gonna open our new pack of film. Do, 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 do. I guess this is like an unboxing video now. I keep my film in the fridge and then I recommend pulling it out like a day or 24 hours before you're gonna shoot just so that the film has time to acclimate and not you know, be a different temperature than where you're shooting. So this is your cartridge film. So this is the dark slide on the top here and that's protecting the images below from light. So you don't wanna move anything or do anything. So this is the top of the film cartridge. This is the bottom. So this is the metal contacts you see here. If you get eye type Polaroid film, it's basically the same exact film, but it just doesn't have the battery in it. And that's only for Polaroid's newer cameras, the eye type cameras. But we're working with a vintage Polaroid camera, so we need 600 type, not a 670, not in stacks, not anything, but we need 600 film. Uh, it comes in black and white. This is in uh, color. This is the black and white version. So we got this little lip here. Keep that on. That's going to help you um, pull the film out later. So you want the top facing up, just like the camera, and you want the connectors facing down, tab facing out and you're just gonna slide it right in there, push it all the way in, crunches in there, and then you're gonna roll it up. And you know it works, it's gonna spit out that dark slide. So there you go, dark slide's out, film is now loaded. You can throw that away or whatever. So, something to know about this film. So we're inside right now, so it doesn't matter that much, but when your film first ejects, it's super sensitive to sunlight. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you're in bright sunlight or you're outside, that you're gonna to wanna to either get that film in shade as quickly as possible or uh, use a frog tongue adapter or even when it used to be really bad, we used to actually just tape dark slides on top like that. But that's generally not required anymore, especially for 600 type. So now we got our film loaded in, camera is good to go. So the way that you can tell now, I don't know if you'll be able to see, 10 exposures in there, which actually means eight. So the way that this camera turns on is you just press the flash on. This red means that the flash is charging and there's no way to use this camera without the flash. Um, if you wanna use this camera without the flash, you'll actually just need to tape a piece of paper or put some tape over top of this thing. So you can see when you turn the camera on, it actually opens this little shutter thing here, which is super clever. So when you're not shooting it, you just make sure it's closed. And when you're shooting it, it's open. There's not really much else you can do. This is a timer button here where if you hit, like if you wanna, you know, give yourself like a tripod selfie or something, you can use this timer shutter button. Um, this is your exposure compensation. Um, I always kind of forget which one's which because it's not super clear, but this is darker, this is lighter. 90% of the time, you just leave it right in the middle and you're gonna be fine. So right now, let's go ahead and just actually take a picture. So pull it up, it's good to go. You're gonna look through the viewfinder. The viewfinder looks next to the lens. You're not actually looking through the lens. This is a range finder. It's not one of the really nice SLRs, but uh, it'll give you an approximate idea of what you're looking at. You press down uh, halfway on the shutter for focus. You're not going to be able to tell what this camera is focusing on, unfortunately, because you're not looking through the lens. But um, pressing down halfway does technically do like some focusing. And then you press down all the way to, to actually take the picture. So um, we're going to take a picture of a whole lot of nothing right here, but uh, just so that you can see it. So it also wakes up the camera if you press it down halfway. So point, point at your subject and you just hit shutter takes photo so now the photo initially ejects these are the most important few seconds about you know keeping the picture protected from light when i actually shoot i typically immediately flip the camera over so, and then put it in my pocket what this does when you protect it from light is there is this blue thing here is actually a chemical called the opacifier and that is a chemical that fades away it's triggered by the rollers and it protects the image from light your image is already developed it's not developing in front of your eyes it's actually just the opacifier dissipating so 
you're going to actually be able to like watch the image develop and yeah the black and white stuff's pretty fast color takes a little bit longer but once you have your picture taken like i said i always just stash it in like a pocket or something so that's hidden from light and then you're ready to take your next picture um like i said make sure that you keep this thing like off when it's not you know you're not in use but this is a hardy little camera it you know i've taken this everywhere i've used it on a bunch of shoots i still use it as my backup camera for my polaroid 680 that i love to shoot but this is probably the best plastic polaroid camera out there there are some newer versions of it that don't have the exposure compensation and then spectra unfortunately doesn't work anymore i have a video about that um, and then your other cheaper you know there's tons of cheaper plastic cameras out there like this was my old backup camera um, but most of them are fixed focus lenses there's not a ton that have this sonar autofocus system which is really great um, something to keep in mind with the sonar autofocus system is that it's kind of very basic um, it's going to focus on whatever the closest object is it's not going to be able to like see through windows and stuff that easily because it's literally just bouncing sonar off of things and using that to figure out like what the focal length is so yeah that's the polaroid impulse af um, i'm trying out something new with this video you might tell i'm uh, i don't have my beautiful mug in it but i'm trying to figure out ways to get more videos out faster right now i've been on a cadence of doing like one or two videos every year which is super slow but it's a big production uh for me to actually set up you know a whole film setup at my office so i'm trying to do something where i can do more videos faster and it's a bit less of like cumbersome setup so uh, if you enjoyed this version of these videos let me know and uh hopefully i have a lot more coming soon all right thank you so much for watching and happy shooting